We're here in Seacliff, one of the tonier neighborhoods of San Francisco, a neighborhood where it's fair to say part of the 1% lives. This is the house of Janet Riley, who's the president of the board of the Golden Gate Bridge. So this is approximately the view that Janet Riley has here every morning of the bridge that she's the president of the board of directors of. Living here in Seacliff, overseeing her empire. The workers at the Golden Gate Bridge who've been negotiating for almost a year now are frustrated and angered that they can't get a fair contract and that the bridge seems to be demanding more and more from them every time they come back to the negotiating table. In particular right now, they're upset because the bridge is demanding that families that work for the bridge pay a higher percentage, a higher payment for their health care than single workers do. And we want a fair contract. We've given them way more than I personally feel comfortable with, but we've given given them that as is for the sake of getting a contract and they still want more. Why, why do you think it is that they want this enrollment uh, cost payment? I think they want to set a precedence. It's not been done. No, no, it's not done anywhere else. And once they do it here, the supervisors will uh, turn around and, and push it on 20,000 union workers in San Francisco and Sonoma and San Mateo and Marin. So this is a stepping stone. We certainly we value everything that you do at the district and always have, and I think we'll you know, continue that tradition for sure. Well, the employees say that they've, they've gotten given already $2 million in concessions, and that's more than the bridge was originally asking for. So what, what, why isn't that enough? I'm not on the I'm not on the labor committee. I'm not on the negotiations, but uh, we want a fair contract for sure. And again, we value our employees. You were just talking with uh, Janet Riley. Did you get any uh, sense of what the issues are now for her? She gave me the usual rhetoric that we've been hearing, and I told her, "Why would you not want labor peace for a principal when you have received in our contract negotiations we've given you three fourths of what it is you wanted." And actually more than that, because we already are involved and agreed to some cost sharing. But you're asking for sharing, cost sharing on top of cost sharing, which creates a burden, an increased burden upon our people. You, we worked out on Extend Health. The pension issue is, is pretty much worked out. And th that, these are all hot button, hot button items. But now you still want more on top of more. And when we ask questions about what, what costs are you trying to recoup, or in negotiations, you don't have a number to even give us. The number that you had, we've exceeded that, and now we ask a question and say, okay, what number are you trying to get to? And the, and the, and the answer is, well, we don't know. So how can you negotiate something if you don't know what you're negotiating for? Some people are saying that the one of the issues here is they want to use Golden Gate Bridge workers as a sort of a stepping stone for other contracts that are being negotiated with other government workers. Do you think there's some possible sense to that? That's a standard ploy, but that doesn't mean we have to capitulate to it because they want to use us to now make some other group bow down. Um, this is negotiations. We need to negotiate what's best for our people. Okay, we understand the fiscal issues. We understand those kinds of things. But we also understand our own fiscal issues. We have families. We have all kinds of things that are affecting us relative to our families, the costs. Medical costs is, is high. We got a family of five. They don't live here in Sea Cliff. They don't overlook the ocean and have nice little parties. Okay? They're living in apartments, they've lost homes, and they're paying for their families and kids. Kids, school age kids, and then our retirees who have vested rights. Now you're trying to say, well, let's change their vested rights. Okay? We're fighting to make sure that they their vested rights are protected. So their principle may be opposed to our principle. Our principle is protecting people. Their principle is you're not a person but a bottom line. Would you see this is the neighborhood of the 1%? Uh, definitely beyond my percent. <laughs> she is the president of the board of directors for the Golden Gate Bridge and her house overlooks the Golden Gate Bridge. You know, this is beautiful. And I don't begrudge her having it. But what I do begrudge is that you have failed to understand the plight of the common person. The common man or woman, the people that really do all the work, so you can oversee it and sit in your board meeting and have your orchid parties and celebrate your 75th and have all the beautiful flowers out there to hide the, the impact on people that you're having by your policies. Well, I think that this is uh, another step in the process and it was clear to 
uh, Miss Riley that we're going to be here and we're going to be out pro protesting until we have a contract. Uh, the next event is on April 7th when we're going to be in Golden Gate Park for another 75th anniversary event. We'll be out there out in force again and we're going to keep on doing this and embarrassing the district and embarrassing the board um, until they settle our contract because they can't celebrate the bridge without celebrating the bridge workers. Yeah. 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 Yeah.